In this video, I wanted to give us an example of a construction of a finite field using Kronecker's theorem. Um, we have, of course, looked at the finite field Z adjoint P, where P is a prime in that situation. Um, these, as a ring, is just the integers mod P. Um, it turns out that you can construct a finite field for any order P to the N, where P is a prime number. And I want to, in this video, construct the field of four elements. I say the field because up to isomorphism, they're all equivalent, they're all isomorphic. We'll prove this in the future, that there's really only one. But I just wanna give you the construction right now because Kronecker's theorem is the tool to do so. By Kronecker's theorem, you can construct a simple extension of a field by using an irreducible polynomial. So look at the finite binary field, Z2. So Z2 only has two elements, right? You have one, and zero here. And you're gonna follow the usual rules of addition, uh, addition and multiplication mod two, right? So when you're working mod two here, we'll just write addition, you know it's mod two. Uh, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one, one plus one is one, and one plus one is zero. So that's just the cyclic group of order two. If you think of it at, in terms of multiplication, like so, zero times zero is, well, zero times anything is zero, and one times one is one. Um, so we get we get our Cayley tables for the operations in that situation. This is our field of order two. We can, from this, construct a field of order four. Um, to do that, we need to find an irreducible polynomial over Z adjoined two, for which there is one and only one such polynomial, but one is enough. The polynomial X squared plus X plus one is an irreducible polynomial um, over Z adjoin, uh, it's just over Z2 adjoin X. Now, how do I know that? Since it's an ir since it's a quadratic polynomial, degree two, right? It'll be irreducible if and only if it has a root. Now, Z2 has only two numbers, and th those are the only two possible roots. We can check those. We can plug in zero, in which case you get zero plus zero plus one, which is one mod two, so that's not a root. You can plug in one and one here, so one plus one plus one, which is three, which is one mod two. Uh, that doesn't quite work either. So P of X is irreducible because we brute force tried every possible number. There's only two. It didn't take that long. It's irreducible because it doesn't have a root. Quadratic polynomials have to have a linear factor if they reduce, and they have to have a root to have a linear factor. Therefore, this is an irreducible polynomial. So then mimicking the construction from Kronecker's theorem, we can construct a simple extension of Z2 by adjoining a root of P of X onto Z2. This is gonna form a field, which we're gonna call that field F4, because it's a field with four elements, and I'll explain what that is in a second. So F4 by construction is Z2 adjoined alpha, where alpha is a root of the polynomial P of X. And I claim that everything in F4 can be written as A plus B alpha, where A and B are binary scalars, zero or one, and then alpha is that root of the polynomial P of X. All right, so how do we know that? So first of all, since by construction alpha is a root to the polynomial P of X, that means that one plus alpha plus alpha squared is equal to zero. It's equal to zero because it's a root. We created a root, we added it to our field, and so it must satisfy this algebraic relationship that one plus alpha plus alpha squared is equal to zero here. Now, if I minus alpha from both sides of this equation and I minus one from both sides, you'll end up with alpha squared is equal to negative alpha minus one. These are our coefficients. Uh, these are coefficients in Z2, but in Z2, there is no such thing as negative one, or better yet, negative one is really just positive one. So negative alpha minus, uh, negative alpha minus one is really just alpha minus uh, alpha plus one so because of this because of this relationship one plus alpha plus alpha squared equals zero that means that alpha squared is equal to one plus alpha and then by induction we can deal with other powers as well if you have something like alpha cubed this would be alpha squared times alpha alpha squared is one plus alpha um, you have alpha here you can distribute the alpha here you're going to end up with alpha plus alpha squared, which alpha squared is, like I said before, one plus alpha. And then you're going to end up with a two alpha plus one. Two alpha is just zero. You just end up with one right here. Alpha cubed is equal to one in this situation. Alpha is, in fact, a third root of unity uh, for this for this field, interesting enough. And so by reduction techniques like this, we can actually construct the Cayley table for any possible combination here. 
Okay. Oh, before we do that, let me, of course, go back to this statement above here, right? How do I know that everything can be written like this? Well, if you are a field with binary coefficients um, and you join alpha, clearly you have to have this. But you might also need c times alpha squared because alpha squared is inside that set. You would need d times alpha cubed because alpha cubed is inside that set. You need e times alpha to the fourth because alpha to the fourth is inside that set. Because if this set is closed under multiplication, you have to have alpha times alpha times alpha times alpha and everything else, right? But because of these reduction principles, I don't need alpha squared because I can write that as one plus alpha. And by induction, all these higher powers of alpha can be written in, as a combination of a scalar and some multiple of alpha. So this, this statement right here is in fact correct that um, one and alpha form a basis for this vector space here. So the reason why this is the field of four elements is because this vector space as a Z2 vector space has dimension two. Now, as the vector space itself has size two, the cardinality here is gonna be two squared, which is equal to four. So this does give us four elements. And what are the four elements here? You get zero, you get one, you get alpha, and you get one plus alpha. So think about the possibilities here, A plus B times alpha. You have two options for A, two options for B, two times two is four, like I was saying before. And so you get these options here. With respect to addition, um, if you look at just this sector, this is just addition on Z2. But then if you throw an alpha here, uh, because this, this new element alpha is linear independent with one, when you take, well, clearly you add zero to everything, you're just gonna get back that element, it's the additive identity. Um, if you add one to it, well, this part's the same. Um, alpha plus one is just equal to alpha plus one. That's what it is, because um, they're independent. You can't simplify it any better than that. Um, but on the other hand, if you take alpha plus one and you add one to that, uh, that's the same thing as alpha plus two. And since we're working mod two, um, the two reduces and you just get back alpha, alpha plus zero in that situation. Um, addition's gonna be commutative um, it's an abelian group with respect to addition here. Alpha plus zero is alpha plus one is what it is. Um, alpha plus alpha is equal to two times alpha, which two and zero are the same number uh, since we're in characteristic two field. Uh, so that gives you zero. And the same thing here, alpha plus one plus alpha is gonna be one plus two alpha, which when you reduce mod two, you just get back one. Um, so alpha plus one plus alpha is one. The remaining calculations are similar. We've done everything except for if you take alpha, uh, if you take one plus alpha plus one plus alpha, you're gonna get two plus two alpha, that reduces to zero. So addition here, uh, notice that the addition, if you look carefully at this, this is just the Klein four group. Uh, this is Z2 cross Z2 with respect to the usual addition. All right, that's always gonna happen with these finite fields. If you look at just the additive structure, you're gonna get an elementary abelian group. Multiplication is where things get really interesting. Um, how does multiplication work? Well, if you look at just this part of our finite field, um, this is just gonna look like multiplication in Z2. But then one is gonna act like the uh, multiplicative identity here. So one times alpha is alpha, one times one plus alpha is one plus alpha. Um, multiplication is commutative, so you see that. So this is the sector where things get interesting. So like we saw earlier, alpha times alpha, which is alpha squared, this equals one plus alpha. All right, so we get that. By the calculation we did up here, um, you're gonna get that alpha times one plus alpha is one, uh, which of course means one plus alpha times alpha is also equal to one. Alpha and one plus alpha are multiplicative inverses. One over alpha is equal to one plus alpha in this ring. That's why it's a field. Every element has a multiplicative inverse. And then finally, what is one plus alpha times one plus alpha? Well, since it's a ring, we can do the FOIL method here. So you can end up with one plus alpha plus alpha plus alpha squared. Uh, so this is gonna give you one plus two alpha plus alpha squared, two alpha is zero, of course. Um, alpha squared is the same thing as, of course, uh, one plus alpha. So you end up with a two plus alpha, but two is zero, so you end up with alpha. Uh, each and every one of these possible products is computed by the relation that alpha squared equals 
one plus alpha. This actually happens. You, that is, we can derive every relationship. We can derive the whole Cayley table from the irreducible polynomial itself because alpha squared equals one plus alpha came from the observation that one plus alpha plus alpha squared equals zero. So the fact that alpha was the root of this irreducible polynomial led to the construction of a field extension, a simple extension. In the case of a simple extension of a finite field, um, that's going to give you another finite field. And we will see in the future that you can create finite fields by generalizing this concept. For the moment, though, we've now seen the field, the finite field of order four.